Hello, I'm Robert McMullen, MD. I'm a psychiatrist in Manhattan for over 35 years. I went to Georgetown Medical School, which is, was to me a very wonderful place, and also did my residency at Columbia Presbyterian, which is one of the best in the world in research and in treatment of, of uh, various psychiatric illnesses. Uh, I've treated over thousands of patients over the years and specialized uh, in psychopharmacology. So in 1988, I stopped doing psychotherapy altogether and devoted my time entirely to evaluating people, getting histories, following them, and helping them out with uh, medication and nutrients and things that are proven to work. And uh, about 2010, I added another modality called TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. Now, what I want to talk to today is about some general things about treatment of depression. It's not just uh, medication, but there's a wide range of things you need for depression. And the first things I want to mention is, is behavioral things and diet that can help depression. Number one, being alone is deadly. That causes people to be depressed. Humans have always lived with other humans, and now we live in a little apartment by ourselves. In the past, the only person that lived out in the middle of the woods by themselves was a witch and fairy tales. <laughs> it just didn't happen. We always need people. So if you're depressed, you have to make a special effort to make friends, to call old friends, to be on the phone, to go see them. I had a good friend who uh, was separated from his wife, which was a big disappointment to him, and he had cancer. And he made a schedule to call all of his friends at least once a week in order to keep his spirits up. I thought it was very smart of him. And uh, so once a week he would call and we would talk to help keep him out of profound depression. And he was a psychiatrist uh, himself who specialized in family therapy and marital therapy. Uh, that's just so important. And having a pet, that's almost as, as good as having a, a, uh, a significant other. You know, if you come home late, the, pet's even, the later you come home, the happier the pet is. If you don't bathe, they don't mind. If you want to go do something, they're always happy to go with you. Uh, that they, they uh, are really excellent to have also. And there's other behavioral things you can do. Is act as if you're not depressed. Go to social events that you don't want to go to and you're too depressed to go, but force yourself and force yourself to act as if you're okay. And that actually helps the depression. And there's studies to uh, to indicate this. In fact, there's even uh, good studies on injecting the frown muscles up here with Botox, and that significantly lifted people out of depression just because they could not frown. Uh, it's very important to keep a good sleep schedule, very regular, and to wake up early every, every morning, go to sleep at 12, get up at 8 or 11 to 7, but never sleep in late. S sleep causes depression. Unfortunately, a third of us that have depression, the depression causes us to oversleep. So we sleep 10 hours, 12 hours. But then the oversleeping keeps the depression going. And if you want to get even more depressed, let yourself sleep 14 hours. And uh, it just is a vicious cycle. I just saw someone today who started to force herself up in the morning and it's already lifting her mood that she's not allowing her to self to sleep 10, 12 hours. And reframe the, w the way you view things. Um, look, th look at things in a positive way. There's nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. That's from uh, Hamlet, Horatio, I think. And uh, you don't have to think about negative things. If you have a lot of negative memories and guilty things, why torture yourself with sitting there and going over all the details for the hundredth time? It's not going to help you. It's better to distract yourself and do something that you enjoy.
Yeah, now, there's some uh, other things that are very important. Uh, probably the top one is exercise. And it's been proven in a study where they had uh, a lot of profoundly depressed people. They had them all go to the gym, and half of them had an hour with a trainer forcing them to exercise standing over them for an hour, and the other half had yoga lessons. The people who had the trainer forcing themselves to do exercises did really well. It did just as well as taking Prozac, Zoloft, Selects, Effexor, Wellbutrin, whatever. It was like a, taking an antidepressant. Now, it's pretty hard to force yourself to do one hour of vigorous exercise per day, five days per week, but it really helps. And three days per week is sort of the minimum effective dose of this, three hours spread out during the week. And if you cannot force yourself to do vigorous exercise, at least walk. And uh, if you can't do vigorous exercise, then aim for walking two hours per day. You know, maybe you can't do it in the beginning, but just force yourself out, and especially early in the morning when the light's out. It's better to have bright light uh, early in the morning, and that triggers your brain into thinking it's spring. And this is a treatment we use also of having a, a light box in front of us about a foot away, really bright light for half an hour early in the morning at the same time. It also helps if you put a light on a timer with a rheostat. I'm sure one can uh, obtain these um, and, uh, and have the light go on slowly over your head in the morning to wake you up more gently. A lot of uh, information about this can be found on uh, James Phelps' website. His uh, website is psycheducation.org and he wrote a terrific book in 2016 on, called A Spectrum Approach to Mood Disorders. Um, the other important lifestyle adjustment you can make is what you eat. And this has been shown in a number of different studies that the more vegan your diet, the better. So uh, if you can eat as little as possible of animal products, like avoid beef, chicken, milk, cheese, yogurt, eggs, uh, and, and, uh, and stick to just vegetables, fruits, salads, and nuts. That's the best diet for depression. Fish is okay. Fish actually has quite an antidepressant effect if, if eaten in, in large amounts. And if one goes on a vegan or vegetarian-like diet, remember to take a multivitamin every day because you generally are not going to get enough vitamin B12 if you're more or less vegetarian. And the multivitamin will provide that. Other nutritional things that help, and all of these have evidence. See, there's a lot of things that don't have evidence and are really a little tricky and dangerous, and that's doing things such as uh, taking mushrooms for depression or marijuana and, and other things. And, and there's some evidence that marijuana helps some people with depression, but the long-term side effects of these things are not well known, and we do know that in the long term, marijuana reduces someone's memory and seems to have some permanent damage based on total dose. So I wouldn't run off using these things until we've established which molecule of, uh, of marijuana has the safest uh, and most efficacious effect. And eventually we may know, but there's a, uh, but we certainly don't now. But things that definitely have proof are, and I'll be brief about these, I could talk for a couple hours on each one, but you can look them up, is taking a lot of fish oil. Uh, the original study was in 19, 
99, and, uh, and I have a patient who's been on 18 fish oil pills per day ever since then, and if he lowers it to 10, he gets depressed. Usually I say take 6 to 10 fish oil pills per day. And, and if you can get the ones that are pure EPA, like Environmental Protection Agency, EPA is for icosapentaenoic acid. That doesn't matter, just remember EPA. The EPA fat is the fat in fish oil that helps depression. So if you get the capsules they now have that are pure EPA, you'll be getting more of the antidepressant effect without having to take quite as big of pills, or as many. Another one is uh, NAC and acetylcysteine. This is an amino acid, and the dose for depression is four grams per day. Originally, it was two grams, which works, but four grams works much better. Inositol is a sugar that's a transmitter in the brain, and we make it. We make it in our brain to use as a transmitter inside the neurons in a positive cascade. And it's, it's also found a little bit in fruit, the sugar, just like sucrose and xylose and so on. And, that, and the dose about of that is 15 to 20 grams per day, say three teaspoons twice a day, and stir it into uh, water or juice and drink it. Uh, probiotics turn out to have an antidepressant effect, but 50% of the probiotics sold do not have anything alive in them. This was a recent article in the New York Times, but I've known this for some time. So it's better to buy about four brands and then alternate them. And, uh, and the brands that come from the refrigerator in the pharmacy are more likely to be alive, I'm told. And take one or two per day. Another uh, substance is L-methylfolate which was originally called Deplin in the, um, in the brand name. And this is the active folate vitamin. And then uh, one of the most important supplements <laughs> is lithium, 150 milligrams, the smallest pill they make of lithium. I've been giving these supplements like fish oil and so on for many, many years. And I fight with people to take them and finally I get people to take them and then I, I accumulate people where it's really working and they've been on them for years. And uh, so I've collected dozens of people. But since I've started using this low-dose lithium two years ago, and other psychiatrists are finding the same thing, I have many more hits. I've, ha I've collected uh, 47 or 48 people in the last two years who their de whose depression lifted within two weeks of taking this small dose of lithium. It's a long story behind that, but at that dose, you don't need to do blood levels, you don't need to monitor it, and virtually no one has any side effects at that dose. And it also, it prevents Alzheimer's. So anybody approaching 60 years old should be at least on five milligrams of lithium, which you can buy on the internet or in a health food store as, as lithium orotate. But lithium orotate is uh, it's the same lithium as is in the prescription pills, which is usually lithium, lithium carbonate. It ends up being the same in the body. Uh, a couple of other quick things is, uh, that are sort of nutrients is, is taking a small dose of uh, one of the thyroid hormones, T3, liothyronine. It's also called Cytomel as a brand name. SAMe. Uh, is a substance that uh, we make in our bodies ourselves, and it has a significant antidepressant effect, but it's a little costly. Uh, vitamin D is important. It's a steroid hormone, but we need to be in the sun to make it, and you have to expose a lot of skin, so everybody in the developed world is low. And adults should be on four or 5,000 international units per day. And if it's a very big person, they may, may need to be on more. But if you just take 2,000, when you get a blood level, you're going to barely have enough to keep your bones hard. You need this to absorb calcium and make bones. Now, let's move on. Those were behavioral and diet things one could do to get out of depression or help prevent depression. Uh, 
another major treatment is, is therapy. And psychotherapy works uh, very well for depression. And there's many different types of therapy. And different therapies work differently for different people. Uh, probably one of the most important things is find a therapist you connect with and you feel good about. The most prominent therapy for depression is cognitive behavioral therapy, where basically you're working on cognition, changing the way you view the world and the way you negatively self-evaluate everything and to argue with these negative evaluations and also to change behavior. And that has an enormous amount of evidence behind it that it helps depression. It's also a treatment that may not be very prolonged. A lot of these cognitive behavioral therapists, they want to make a, a contract to do 10 treatments and then reevaluate. They don't want to say, oh, okay, let's, let's meet every uh, day or t every week or twice a week for the next year. They want to get people better. And, and when there's a, uh, a limited time that's going to be used to get out of depression, we put a lot more effort into making it work. Another therapy that I don't know uh, as much about is EMDR. EMDR. And, um, and this seems to have more and more evidence that this works. And uh, it has to do with having negative thoughts and then uh, moving one's eyes in a certain way and trying to neutralize these very bad memories. And uh, I'm told and then I've been sent references on literature that uh, supports this as being fairly effective. I just don't know a lot about it, but you can look into that. Um, now, as far as the medications go, there's a wide variety, and, uh, and, and you want a doctor who's going to try to find something that's going to have the, less, the least possible side effects. With, with modern medication, starting with uh, Prozac in 1988, it's been a revolution that now we have medicines that uh, often you hardly feel like you're taking. You should start with uh, one that has a, a history of being relatively so low in side effects. And if it does have significant side effects, then either stay on a very low dose for a while or switch to something else. But ultimately to be seeking to be 100% in a normal mode and not be suffering a lot of side effects. And this can often be done. If a medicine gives a lot of side effects, it may mean that it's going to work at a low dose because it's getting there. Otherwise, you wouldn't be having all these side effects. So, uh, Lamotrigine, for example, we're, we're really using that a lot with people who have um, some mood swings, some spectrum mood swings up and down and, uh, and, and uh, depressions that are precipitated by bad events and people who are reactive to events, and, and also depressions that are characterized sometimes by oversleeping and overeating. And the usual dose is about 200 milligrams for depression. But sometimes you have people that get sedated and have bad side effects at 50. Then you just leave them lower. I have two people that can only take 25 milligrams and are sedated on 50, but on 25, they're doing excellent. And it's kept working for years. Uh, the maximum dose is 600 or 800, uh, doses which are usually used in epilepsy. Now, um, now sometimes you people combine uh, different antidepressants. If uh, serotonin medicine is not working 100%, uh, something like Zoloft, Sertraline, Prozac, Fluoxetine, Celexa, Citalopram, and so on. Then uh, adding a medication like Wellbutrin, Bupropion, uh, often will work better. And then you're on two medicines at lower doses, 
so you're having you have the side effects spread out and you get more efficacy because you're treating the depression from two different directions and then I wouldn't jump to doing things that are too exotic you know after people failed on a few medicines they often jump to wanting to have ketamine injections and ketamine helps depression you know there's lots of studies on this but it's an IV it costs a few hundred dollars every time you do it and often it just helps your mood for a few days and then you have to go in and have another one it's not been worked out how to use it effectively and what we're really looking for is to find a medication that'll have the same mechanism and that would be ideal because you can't be going in and getting uh, IV ketamine twice a week forever and even then it sometimes poops out and it's uh, efficacy <coughs> the um, another thing that one has to keep in mind and this is really important is that half of us humans who are prone to depression are a little bit prone to being slightly bipolar which means we have mood swings a bit and uh, not that we're manic or anything like that, but we, maybe we have periods where we're more, we're more exuberant than the average person. But in any case, uh, have this little bit of bipolarity in us. And anyone who's failed on several medicines, that they take them, and the antidepressant makes them feel much better for two weeks or for two months, and then it poops out, and then they try another and the same thing happens, or the medicines just stop working, often they're slightly bipolar. And, uh, and people don't like that word because we used to call people with manic depression manic de that they had manic depression. Then we changed the word to bipolar one because manic depression sounded bad. <laughs> but now all the negative stigma is attached to the word bipolar. So somebody who's just a tiny bit bipolar is, uh, has got all this stigma attached to the word. But in these people who are failing on antidepressants repeatedly uh, you should switch to something that's not going to poop out and the best two things are lamotrigine, lamictal and uh, and low dose lithium those two things you know, plus a lot of other dietary and nutrient things that I've mentioned and there's some other medicines but those two have the least side effects and the most uh, options for working and another thing you have to think about, just being logical about this, Betty Carter, who was a famous marital therapist, she's deceased now, a wonderful lady. She said, if it's not working, throw it out. And she meant, if you're trying to discipline your daughter or your son and the discipline isn't working and it's just making everything worse, if it's not working, throw it out, stop doing it. You know, if you keep uh, trying to punish them in the same way and <laughs> it's not working, what's, why are you doing this? And uh, and it's the same way with the medication, if you think about it. If you're taking multiple antidepressants and they're not working, then stop it. Don't do this. And if you're on a, I have people that are on a ton of medicine and they've been on this for years and they're in terrible shape. They're at the bottom. They're very depressed. Now, it's not working. And now, maybe as you take them off, maybe they'll, every time you lower something, they'll get more depressed for a week. But then they'll come, you know, and eventually you get them off all the medicine and then they won't be as bad as when they were on all the medicine. And sometimes they'll gradually improve as the months go on, especially if you add in some Lamictal, Lamotrigine, or some Depakote uh, Divalproate. And, and, uh, and these medicines, including the Depakote Divalproate, don't have to be at high doses. And uh, I had a lawyer who was disabled at 50 years old from mood swings and you know major agitated depressions, and his depressions were cycling between agitation and retarded depressions and and uh, his life was miserable and on just uh, oh, he was six foot three 270 pounds he was on a very small amount of Depakote 250 twice a day is all he could tolerate and at his size he could have taken 2,500 and he was only taking 500 in 10 months he was completely normal and he stayed that way the rest of his life to the amazement of his family now, we finished medication. I want to move on to some things about electrical stimulation of the brain. 
I don't want to go into all of, I, I'm not going to go into much detail. There, there's actually quite a few different treatments, including the most extreme is neurosurgery, where they implant uh, needles into, going deep into the brain and then stimulate certain areas of the brain with a pacemaker that's implanted in your chest or someplace. And, uh, and this is used for extraordinarily treatment resistant people and, and it does work, but it hard, you know, it's pretty rare to do this. There's also a vagal nerve stimulator, which is an implant in the chest and a wire goes to the vagus nerve and every four minutes there's 30 seconds of electricity going up into the brain. 40,000 Americans have this for epilepsy, but it also works for depression. And a lot of times it takes three months or more before it's uh, working well, but it's really well worth it in somebody who's hit the end of the line. And then there's also a, a direct current stimulation where you run a little electricity from one side of the brain to the other with a little uh, nine volt battery and say run it from the shoulder to here and a little electricity going and there's evidence that that works it's not a it's not often a home run but the research shows it does work and I've used it in you know dozens and dozens of people but it just doesn't work as well as TMS now, then there's shock treatment, and this has uh, been used extensively since the 40s, and this is running a huge amount of electricity through the brain, inducing a seizure. And then the person has a grand mal seizure under controlled circumstances, they're getting oxygen, they have anesthesia, they're paralyzed, so uh, they hardly move. And it's uh, not at all like one flew over the cuckoo's nest with Jack Nicholson, which uh, kind of ruined the reputation of ECT. And, and that works really well. But it's usually used for people that are extremely depressed and, uh, and if they're delusional. You know, if, if they were a pretty normal person six months ago and now they believe that they caused the Afghanistan war because of their sins, uh, those people do really well with ECT. And it's, and it's used for less serious depressions too. It's just a bit of a dramatic treatment. And, and then transcranial magnetic stimulation is, is approaching efficacy of ECT. And I think it equals it or surpasses it. And uh, Harold Sackheim, who was a great researcher in shock treatment ECT, said that TMS is better than ECT, not only because it's safer and you don't have anesthesia and it's comfortable and you go get your treatment in the morning and you go to work and you have a normal day, uh, but also because it's more durable. That with shock treatment, a lot of times you relapse in six months or a year in the same big depression and then you have to go in and have another 10 or 12 treatments to get out of it. With TMS, Often the remission is longer than that. The people will stay in remission. They may only stay in remission a few months, or, but they may go three years, five years. And, uh, and when they do relapse, then they only need five or six treatments frequently. So somebody goes back into a bad depression. They cut, they're, they're really distressed. Oh my God, I can't go through 30 more treatments of going, the expense and going in there every day, I, here I gotta go do this whole thing over again. Although I've told them that that's not gonna be like that. They come in and to their surprise, five or six treatments are back to normal or they schedule five treatments and after two or three treatments they call in, listen, I wanna cancel the rest of my treatments because I'm back to normal. And uh, something has changed in the brain permanently for the better. And uh, Harold Sackheim, in another lecture, he said, you know, we're just giving a uh, homeopathic dose of magnetic fields to the brain in particular areas to treat these depressions. And then the activity of the brain is, uh, is different for 45 minutes after the treatment. On EEG, it's a little activated or a little bit suppressed. And then everything goes back to normal. You can't see anything different. And then two weeks later or so, they're beginning to come out of uh, their depression. And he says, I think what's happening is the brain is curing itself. 
the brain wants to get better, and somehow the TMS is enabling it. Uh, you know, perhaps by increasing the growth hormone of the brain, uh, BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Uh, but in any case, that made an enormous sense to me because why else would uh, people, when they relapse, only need a few more treatments to get back to normal? It's as if the brain wanted to be normal and it got there and the TMS helped it. Uh, I just think it's a, it's a terrific treatment for anybody that's been failing. And after the treatment, you still need to stay on medicine, but now the medicine that didn't work very well will work 100%. Or maybe you can reduce medicines a little bit. Anyway, that's uh, my brief summary of treatments for depression. Hopefully there's going to be more treatments coming out for depression, both medication and behavioral and diet and nutrients. And there's research going on all the time. And, and what I've done so far is summarize what's available now. And all of these things have solid scientific proof behind them. That they, uh, some of them were double blind studies, but there were, there, were, there were very good studies accepted by major publications. And, and those include things like behavior, uh, restricting your sleep to eight hours at the same time, exercising a lot, seeing friends, forcing yourself out to uh, see people and meet new people, and dietary things, which definitely have been proven to help. Uh, th there's other dietary things that are advocated, like uh, turmeric. And theoretically, it should work, but when they did a study, it didn't work. Maybe they just didn't use a high enough dose. But in any case, I would go with the things that have solid proof. And then there's the various therapies, including CBT and, and EMDR. And these are well proven to work for depression. And uh, for almost any type of depression, if people are profoundly depressed, so you know they just can't stop with constant guilt, and, and uh, sometimes they can't take advantage of it until they're they're a little bit a little better. And then we have a wide range of medications, which I hardly went into, um, but we have quite a lot. And then we have a number of medicines that are not uh, actually. FDA approved for depression, but they're used for some other disorder like Parkinson's disease or something that have a good antidepressant effect. But they have evidence. They have uh, studies showing that these things work. And then we have these uh, uh, electrical interventions, you could call them, shock treatment, and, uh, and the TMS, the transcranial magnetic stimulation. But with all of these, you should find something or some combination of things to get all the way to normal. And that should be the goal. And we have studies showing that if you have residual symptoms, like your depression's pretty much gone, but you still sleep a little too much, your concentration's not quite what it should be. If you still have residual symptoms of depression, you have much higher rate that you're gonna relapse and have another big depression in the next year or so than if you have no residual symptoms, get all the way to normal. So that's another reason you want to be uh, not satisfied until you're all the way to normal and feel okay all the time. Thank you very much.